My name is Govind Ramdas Ram Kamal. That was the exact expression Vivida ma'am had when I first came here. <laughs> Most of the time which I started sketching was when I was bored in classrooms. So this is a typical NID in starting his story. Yeah. Most of my preparation was in two phase. Like my hand was broken while I was having my studio test. Nice. That would be it ladies and gentlemen. That's the only importance <laughs> that you have for NID ranks. Once you get in, it's not at all important. I think one of the most important which helped us getting into NID. But designing is not just drawing. You have to make something. You have to use Ask the Topper is a series wherein our toppers of architecture and design entrance exams come back and share their journey of how exactly they traveled while they were trying to top the exams or while they were preparing for the exams. They share their experiences and their strategies and we will get to know them a lot more. Hello everyone, this is Suraj and you are with Think Institute of Design and this is the Ask the Topper series. Our guest in this session is somebody who is pretty good at cracking. From cracking his hands while he was preparing for NID with us to finally going on to crack NID, he has travelled a long way. In fact, so much that today he has come up with a cracked leg. This is Govind from National Institute of Design, Andhra Pradesh. Welcome, Govind. Thank you for having me. Uh, so, let's start with something about yourselves. Let's uh, let the viewers know what, who exactly you are, where you are coming from, your parents. So, my name is Govind Ramdas Ram Kamal. That was the exact expression Vibhita ma'am had when I first came here. <laughs> so, I, I'm from here only, like from Toronto, it's like uh, in Kaidamukha. And to be honest, it was like, I didn't know about design or an idea, like anything about that. So, after my 12th grade, I was like pretty confused on what to take. I don't know which direction I should go. This is, uh, this is a typical an idea and starting his story yeah, yes <laughs> no idea where to go it's like it was like that then by chance uh, there was this one nata mock text mock text happening here from here only. so it's like i'll just try it anyways like i don't have anything else to do then i go to know about an idea and then beat us and then i was like i cannot prepare on this like alone like i have no idea what to do no direction whatsoever so I came here, I talked with Vipita and she changed my mind like then I, that's why I'm here. So <clears throat> uh, where exactly did you do your schooling? Can you tell me a little bit about your family? So, I studied in Arya Central School in Pattam. My dad was a uh, retired photographer. My mom is a graphic designer. Okay. So yeah, it, it's kind of running in my blood. <laughs> <laughs> And I have two sisters, uh, the eldest one is a psychologist, second one is, uh, right now she got a job in Technopark, so she is a uh, child accountant. Okay, so yeah, that's pretty much. Okay, so uh, when you're saying you're totally clueless uh, after your 12th, like uh, you have a graphic designer, you have a photographer, it's, it's quite unconvincing to be frank, so did, you did not have any thought or uh, any any sort of signals, no signals, nothing like that during your childhood. So see, when I say about direction, it's like when there is too much of options you have, it's like again you're clueless where to go. Okay. So as I said, my dad was a photographer, mom is a graphic designer, but just because of that, I cannot choose like where to go, right? It's uh, like yeah, you need some kind of degree after school also. So that's why I was clueless, like from where to start. Like I knew I had a love for drawing and sketching from childhood but then where can i use it that's something which i didn't know so <clears throat> how did you explore that like how did you arrive at uh, sketching painting like did you attend any classes or was it school how did you catch it up no so basically i was a huge fan of cartoons back then okay. so i didn't go for any art class or anything but then we did had like uh, art classes in school but not like every every year oh, okay. so most of the time which i started sketching was when i was bored in classrooms okay. so you start sketching in your textbook yeah. you start sketching in your table so that's how i think just to get out of the boredom of textbooks i think i discovered sketching and i fell in love with it i think uh, more than arts as a subject these are the places where in in a school you see artwork yeah. 
uh, the benches, uh, the last pages of the uh, class notebooks and things. So it's like art is stories, right? And these are the places where you find these stories. Stories. Okay. It's also quite interesting to note that uh, you did not have any sort of plan in your probably 11th and 12th, if I'm not wrong. Because most of the students uh, will be forced to fall into either engineering or medicine. So most of the designers that we get uh, would, you know, probably have a one year of uh, engineering or medicine preparation, then doodle a lot in their notebooks, then realize that their passion is sketching or doodling and then come back. So you did not have any sort of... No. See, the thing was like, I was one year younger to my batch. Okay. And I was pretty sure I don't want to go anywhere near engineering <laughs> or no doctor, like, like nothing in those three streams. But then... I did have the love for animation, cartoons and so I was pretty sure somewhere along the way I'll fall into that kind of category but then I don't know like where to start. Okay. So like you've sort of, you had sort of an idea that where you would be going but not exactly. Not exactly. Okay, okay. And also in addition there was no pressure of uh, yeah, no. doing engineering or medicine. That is, that's great. It's also quite interesting to note the family background, no? And also you have a psychologist, you have a CA, you have a designer. These are like entirely different baskets that you're talking about. Quite, quite an interesting family background. Okay, so uh, you've already mentioned about animation. So, what are your hobbies? What are your uh, passions? Like, as you know, I'm a huge sports fan. So, so that's probably why you have uh, a ligament fracture now. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. And uh, you had a broken uh, hand also while you're preparing? Yeah. Okay. Like, my hand was broken while I was having my studio test. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's like, most of my hobbies are like spent outdoors. Like, I like traveling a lot. My dad loves to travel, so he takes me along with him. So most of my vacation, my holidays, I go with my dad, and he shows me around the world, like in India. Like I have gone through northeast, I've gone through like north, like Delhi, Himachal. Like so, it's like my hobbies are mostly spent in traveling. I never spend any any time inside the house. So, but then the I had the love for drawing. So why like? want to draw, I cannot sit at home and draw also. So what I used to do, like, I used to have my sketchbook with me. I go out, wherever I'm going, I used to draw, scribble something of that place. So it's like something you, it's like a memory. So once you finish one sketchbook, you go through it, you can see the entire thing you have been going through, like each day. Okay. So pretty much that's my hobbies. So let's talk about NID, NID preparation and all. So to start off with, what exactly was your NID rank? Like, I think it was 62 or 63, something like around that range. Yeah, so that would be it, ladies and gentlemen. That's the only importance <laughs> that you have for NID ranks. Once you get in, it's not at all important. <laughs> okay, so coming to your preparations, how exactly was your NID preparation? Can you just take us through? Okay, so when I first start, came here, even though I love drawing, right? But that's not enough. Like, see, there is a lot of thing when you say you love to draw, it's like you can do sketches, doodle something. But then when you actually get into design field, the main, so there the language is drawing. So you have to be as much as, like as clear as possible when you actually do your work. So when I first came here, that was the first job, to refine my skills in how to draw. So I had my mentors here who helped me go through like different phase of drawing from very dot to the fine renders and everything how to compose a scene how to make a sketch so it's like it's not exactly what do you say they were not preparing me for cracking a cracking an exam they like preparing me to become a designer okay so my first initial what do you say the lessons which i had here was how to communicate what you're thinking into into, into a paper it was like that and after that, it was like, you create ideas. How if in a room of 100 people, your ideas are different than the rest of the 99 people? Then it was like that. Then we had a friendly competition inside our small bunch. Like, we would stay back, we would draw more, we would draw more, like, we would give each other task to draw something. It's like, in five seconds, in 20 seconds, you had to draw an entire people doing some activities. So these kind of things made it more fun to prepare. It's not like, that's the difference I felt like when I'm preparing for some exam, like engineering or something, and then I'm preparing for NID. It's like it's a very enjoyable. Every day I was enjoying every moment of it. I never think thought about time. It's like I come here, I finish it. It's like 6 p.m. 
then and then sachin then has like kick me out of here okay it's it's quite interesting to note that because recently i was talking to jee topper and she was also saying the same thing like it reached a point wherein you had to there was a group of friends and they used to create questions for themselves and challenge each other so what are the other things like the additional things the additional efforts that you had put in similar kind of stories that you can share okay so when i there is this conversation which i to like in we are thinking about topics and we each other draw right there is also the other way like we split into groups and each group had to come up with an ideas of one topic we'll tackle like basically when when while we were there it was like design is kind of problem solving so we would try to find problems like random problems like for example we are taking a scissors it, this was like one day okay so we took a scissors what's the wrong with scissors like there is nothing much wrong with scissors but then we pointed out like when we using right hand and left hand it matters a lot cutting a scissors from left hand mm. is different and right hand is different because it is meant for a right hand right hand so how will you make a scissors which can be used by both the hands so these like these kind of fun what is a problems we took and we try to tackle them i mean we are not experienced in the technical terms but it was very fun to research on it how to find the solution and stuff there was times when we were trying to research on like different communities out there we would uh, take different state Look, look at tribal people. Their architectures is like very different. Yeah. When we go there, it's like the materials they use, the property, like everything is completely different than how we are used to here. Mm-hmm. So it was very fun to discover a lot in a group, and then sharing them with everyone. So, see, I was I don't have the habit of reading much. Okay. But while I was here, it's like. free free information every day okay it's like someone will come up with some new software out there or something they discover and they will share with everyone and it's not like he'll come in front of everyone and then he'll explain it's like everyone will be communicating with each other it's like a small bunch because of that it's like the bond between us was a lot so one of them sharing one idea is like everyone will come towards him to listen so it was like that so sharing information ideas so the news out there is was the I think one of the most important, which helped us getting into NID at that point. Very, very curious to know where are the rest of them? They are in NID, like in different uh, branches. Okay. Few of them got into NIFT, okay. MITs, and then there are some who got into IIT. Okay. So, like most of the group I had in my group, everyone got into their own places, like they're fit in. That's quite interesting to note. Uh, now, uh, when we're talking about the Uh, do's and don'ts like uh, was there any sort of specific time table that you followed throughout that one particular year see it depends on each person like for some people drawing will be very easy for them so they don't have to spend more time refining their sketching skills but for me it was a bit different so i would spend my extra time just sketching something i would randomly play some movies i'll just sketch on that i'll be talking to my friend i'll be sketching on the side So it's like it's a continuous thing, mm. but then there is a direction to follow. It's not like directly you start into like hyper realistic sketch. Mm. No, you have to first know how to put the dot, how to put a line, how much pressure a line should have. So these kind of things I got to know after coming here. So once I got a direction on how to practice, I followed that. And to be honest, like having a timetable will be very hard. Like then it's like you have to follow that. Then it will be like I don't want to do it. Mm. So. if you have something which you love to do is like you don't need a specific time table to follow it like every now and then when you are free when you think about like try it on like sketching it is like a habit it goes on the side while you are watching you playing games or talking with people it's, it's like it's like part of you after that so practice kind of was like that but when it comes to like general knowledge that is like i was i really hated that part I really hated to my core that I had to find like learn by heart general knowledge and stuff. But then, you <laughs> after coming there, they just made me sit. They made me read, and that is actually good because, to be honest, like without understanding what's out there, without understanding like what kind of a culture you're in, you cannot design for them unless you know about them. So that's why it was very important that in the exam there was a topic of general knowledge. You need to know that. and they had to make me sit and do it it was a big task but they made me do it 
it's nice thing to hear uh, because currently I am the GK faculty here. <laughs> Uh, and it's also something related to the um, tribal architecture and things that you're talking about, right? It's mostly those things, it's just that it's in a different form, the general knowledge that is coming up, right? Okay. Uh, so talking about your preparations, what were the kind of workshops that were arranged? What were the kind of things that helped you in the process? So there is a big part which is, when I said like drawing helps, but designing is not just drawing. You have to make something, you have to use your hand, you have to get dirty. So it's like after coming here, we were learning of different things, tessellations, how to cut papers, how to paste them in a pattern, like it creates a continuous styles. How, how does that help in architecture, how does that help in design? So there are different workshops which we had, we had to use these kind of materials and make something. It was random, like one day uh, my faculty just came here, he gave us a bunch a packet of matchbox, one thermocode, okay. and it's like make a portrait out of this. Oh, okay. I'm like, we were thinking like, what's the point of it? Like, it's just wasting time. But the thing is, then we get to know like, every time you're poking, like, keeping a mash box, mash, uh, mash, mash stick. stick, in the thermocol, it's like, we have to create the density. There is like, different density, like, this place is more denser, this place is fatter, mm -hmm. flatter. So like, that helped us visualize more. So it's not just drawing that helps you. The main point of this workshop was like to create a, to afford, help us visualize, right? Mm -hmm. So these kind of fun activities, which was at that point when we think it like, it was pointless for us, we like, it's a waste of time. But that's what, which helped us like in the end. So like, now when you look back at it, yeah, it makes a lot of like, sense. It, design is always like that once, while we are trying to practice, we'll be like, it's pointless to do this, like there's no point. Why are we doing this? But then. After a while, it's like because you've done that, that experience is like inscribed in your brain. It's like at that point, you're starting visualizing everything. So, we had those kind of things, it was very fun. So, uh, how exactly was your prelims preparation? How did you undergo that, like the last one or two months? I won't lie, it was very tense. We were all like tense to the max. Like, see, we already took a year break, right? So, I mean, I had the option of taking one more year since the age gap is not an issue for me. But still, you will get the feeling of you had to get in some, you had to get in somewhere. Like. So, last two months is when that entire adrenaline just rushed into you. The fire. Really yeah, the fire. It's just, you start sketching a lot. You start like omitting a lot. It was like that. So, my preparation was that one of the main things my faculty is told like, design is out there. It's not inside walls, it's not inside a monitor. Mm -hmm. So, whatever I learned was like either talking with people, then I had to go out into the place because there are a lot of time in where you had to draw a landscape. Maybe you go to a market or somewhere, you had to draw that. But you, how much can you imagine what's happening inside a market? Oh, okay. It's like many of the things you're just imagining with the limited information you have, you don't have, you don't know what's exactly happening there. Like the interesting things which will happen in the market, you will get to know once you are in the market. So we had sessions where we had to go like, this was like during the last two months. Oh, okay. So there was classroom, classroom time, mm -hmm. there are outdoors. Okay. So in that outdoor times, which I, when I prepared this was like, I'll go to places like the Chala market and everyone, every place here. It's like very unique. So one thing which sets each student apart is the place they come from. See when someone from Delhi is asked to draw a market mm -hmm. and someone from Trivandrum mm -hmm. is asked to draw a market. If they are imagining, they are only imagining the place they are seen in movies, in cartoons and stuff. So it will be the same. But if the person is in, like, including their own culture into it, it will be completely different. Yeah. Right? That's where design works. Okay. You put yourself into it, like put your essence into it. The place you come from, the culture you come from, who you are making it for. So when I went to the market, you see interesting things like there will be like grandfathers who take milks but he will be giving it to the kittens also. Oh, there will be times okay. when people are quarrelling with each other over <laughs> some stupid things. There will be people who won't move out of the middle of the way. They will be arguing with the shopkeeper in the middle of the road. So these are the interesting things which happen there. So these, so these won't be visible, like the, you can't imagine all that unless you have seen it. So most of my preparation was in two phases. One was improving, improving my skills after getting back home. This, this is after dark. 
like uh, there will be a time in a day where there, there is not much you can you have to do you don't have to go anywhere you don't have to like you don't have any house or course mm-hmm. you don't have to drive anyway so this time i put effort into drawing improving my skills then i used to watch youtube tutorials like different youtube tutorials how to sketch how to make industrial design like that's when when i came here I, it was just design after i came here it was like there is industrial design communication textiles like there is a big variety of design so where do i want to go once i get in so uh, during the last two months these kind of thoughts come in which helps us like see when we see just a gate we'll be thinking about reaching that gate but if we see something beyond that gate like af- what will i do after getting into nid i want to do industrial design so i started doing a more of like trying to do product sketching those kind of things so which helped me kind of cool down from the pressure of exam so by then it was like practicing my skills also improving my what is it my arsenal like i had different things i can show so if someone asked me to draw a product i can do it in a def- like detailed way, proper way when i when someone is asking me to draw a comic since i love comics animation like that information is already there so i use that so my the second time when i was at home that was the thing like exploring different categories of design uh, where all i can draw like how where all i have to improve so i might be good at human anatomy and like how to draw but i might be weak in composition so how to improve the composition will be i'll be spending that time so realizing your mistakes where your flaws are that is one of the what is it time consuming thing but the most important thing so once you realize where you are going down you focus on that for like next 1 2 3 days you so, improve uh, that improve. yeah uh, so just to interrupt that like how do you figure that out like do you do it by yourself is it like you draw something today look at it tomorrow and realize it or do you take it to your friends faculty how do you do that all of this oh okay see it's like you can't realize a mistake on the spot mm. maybe you can like it happens like you draw something you're like you're not happy with it then you realize okay this is wrong this is wrong but there are times when i will draw i'll keep it for some time i'll go out i'll play basketball come back probably injured myself i'll come back and then Maybe i'll like come back yeah okay. <laughs> it's like part of the routine i'll come back and be like this is shit this is not good the reason why i feel like that is because when i come here i draw something i'll be like oh this is the best drawing i ever done then the faculty will be like this is wrong this is not good okay. so every time someone is saying this is not good you can either dis- get disgusted and get demotivated or you can try to improve it right so the next time when i went i t- there was a time when i had to draw a poster i had to make a poster the faculty didn't approve that poster for one week i had to draw that poster again and again and again for the entire week the same topic in the end because after two three times when he rejects the fourth time when i go to him he just look at me he'll be like what do you think then i think that okay this is wrong i can improve in this part so that's when you start to think like okay you can improve on your own you can find the wrong thing okay you slowly start being self critical yeah. about the work that you, you do you have to critic your own work okay you you, you have to be the harshest critic you can be on yourself if you want to improve okay so yeah that was part of the routine that's worth noting it down okay now <clears throat> i understand as, uh, the exam was somewhere in jan feb is it the the nid prelims is what i'm talking uh, about the prelims was during december end okay so end. once that was done that is when the covid is uh, slowly starting to kick off yeah like while we were, while the exam was happening we were having like, okay china one covid one virus is there okay fine it won't reach anywhere like fine happy happy ending it's quite interesting to note it now no we have the core yeah. variant that we is... knew then i don't know how it would have been turned out the power of hindsight yeah. okay so then what happens like then covid comes right the the typical uh, studio test all these things are going to go into shambles so see i was very uh, like see my hands on skills were actually not that great at that point okay. so i was very tense back then and actually i didn't have any hopes of see it's something about me okay I, i don't keep very like high hopes when i'm writing next time like if i don't get it i don't get it i'll try again it was like that because if i think that i will pass i will pass then if i don't get it i'll be like i'll be too much demotivated mm-hmm. so instead of that i kept a hope but not too much so that i can focus if I, if something goes wrong i can again catch up so back then i was like pretty tense about the studio test because i was weak in my hands on skills my material handling was not that neat 
so we were having like everyone from here in my batch we went on a trip we went to vinad that's when navdeep was staying oh yeah, yeah, yeah. navdeep yeah. so we went there we were having so much of fun third day boom covid happened like covid is outbreak in uh, farans village uh, there is this covid outbreak happening so his parents is worried he has to come back we cut short the trip we started traveling back but me and my dad stayed back in calicut at that time he had a job there that's when the nift and uc result came see by then we were waiting like nid was the first exam so i was waiting for nid's result oh, okay. suddenly they call like there is nift and uc exam I'm like oh okay yeah. i checked the nift i didn't get a good rank which i hoped so like okay. okay if i didn't get nift i was like i won't get nid also then i checked uc i had 320 rank Okay. So I was happy. Like, okay, something went okay. Like, during the U C D exam, I was like, I was pretty disheartened disarts- because I couldn't manage time, which is very important while the preparation is going on. But back then, it was a b- big blunder. Like, I didn't think there was a another ses- section in the exam. So I just finished everything. I check- went back, checked again. But when the time I realized there was one more session, it was too late. This is a story worth sharing with your kids. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so that was the thing. So the result came. Covid came at the same time. No, wait. You didn't do the second part for UC. No. You didn't do the second part for UC at all. No, I did the uh, no in the MCQ test, right? Okay. There is one more session like Oh, okay, okay, okay. That okay. I didn't do. Okay. Drawing I did. Drawing was the first thing I attempted. Oh, okay. Because so that was my forte. So I did drawing first, then I moved to the MCQs because I knew like something which I can do faster. I'll appro- I'll do first, and then I'll go to the others first. Okay. Like that. Oh, okay. Because I don't want to mess up something which I'm good at, mm. just because I need more time in something which I don't know. Also, so, it improves your confidence. Yeah, that was my plan during the UC exam, and kind of worked. Point to be noted Point for everyone who is writing the exam. Okay. And then the result came UC and NIFT at the same time, like middle of the night at 12 a.m. 12 or 1. the result came typical typical okay the group the entire thing group was bombarding with message did you pass did you pass did you get in what's the rank what's the rank like and then you feel the anticipation like you want to check even but you don't want to check but if you don't get it like it was like that and i didn't get nift i was like okay it was not a good rank it like i still got it but it was not a good rank okay i got use it but it was like not enough okay for me to get in so it's like okay it's fine like i can still attempt next year but then covid happened oh. we travel back home next day the day i came back home next day like okay lockdown done oh. so there is nothing much for me to do like the exams are over i just waiting for the result then i started i that's when i started animating like i wanted to try animation for a long time okay. i didn't have a reason to sit at home to work on animation because it takes a lot of time so i was stuck at home anyway might as well use it so i started animating i checked youtube tutorials i started animating a lot then there was one time when i got an opportunity to work on a product it's like a automatic hand sanitizer machine so that was the first time i get to try a 3d model so i went to youtube i studied sketch up on my own tried a mock up it kind it worked the it was like rough model we had, just, we had to just make a mock model so it it was very fun to work with because they were engineers So to work along with engineers, that's when a design is complete. Mm. Design is complete when there is a designer, and then there are others working in the mechanical side of it. So I was very happy that I got to do with the product designing also. So these kind of thing which added up in the portfolio. Yeah, so yeah. I never imagine I getting like passing the first exam, but then I wanted to try different things anyway. So I started doing a lot. I tried making stuff because I was weak at it. Mm. So if case i got in like i passed the first exam i have to make something It'll, this studio test will be there mm-hmm. so i started draw like making some models or a game or something which will improve my skill set like if just if i just get a paper and if i don't have a glue how will i manage like i have to learn how what all i can do with the paper i can roll it i can bend it i can make layers of it make it thick so this kind of thing i explored during that time and then the result came in i 
I didn't open it because the how I got the result was like one of my friend didn't get into NID, oh, okay. and he texted me that first. Mm. So the first message you see is like you didn't get into NID, right? Mm. So I didn't. I was scared to open it. Mm. Then I opened it. Turned out I had a pretty good mark. I had like 62. Mm. Then I was like I was happy because I never expected because general knowledge was weak for me. But then because I spent much time here, they made me learn it. It helped me there because of that discussions every day. Because there are general knowledge which is like you cannot find inside books. It is out there, right? It's happening right now. That's the thing about NID exam is like every year it changes. It gets updated. So because of the discussion, I got help. I learned a lot, which helped me. And thankfully, I got like really good mark, so that I can go to the next. Uh, Exam.